Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and we are going to start working on some new journals. I still have to finish Christy's journal off but there's only a few things to put in there so I'll get that done by the end of this week. Oh, that's tomorrow, Saturday. Um, and anyway, I'm going to start these new three journals. Um, this one is damaged but of course I wasn't going to throw it out. Look, it's an 1800s book. So um, that one will be covered with something and there as well probably do paper there on the back and then I have these two covers none of them have spines so that's great because I can I like that because I want to do a soft spine and um, and do them the size that I want to do them so my main kit for two of the journals is going to be the new uh, Italian ladies with mixed in some botanical and the other one, the third journal is going to be, which I think is going to be this one, um, is going to be botanical. So um, let's just start by dividing the pages. So we'll look at these in a minute. I'm going to do a soft spine, which means I'm going to put tape to hold it together for a minute. But the tape is not actually going to be the thing that's really holding the journal together because then I'm going to be adding fabric inside and out. So that's what's really going to hold the journal together. The tape is just to help it sort of all fix in place and make it a little bit more sturdy. Right, so I want to divide my papers. First, I want to look at my, I've got some of my um, sort of old book pages printed as well. I may slip in a few of those and I've just put some tea dyed paper on the reverse. I'd actually have some of these left. Out. Oh, that's Italian. I'll put that one away. I found these in my folder as well. I've got no I won't use those but I might use one of these in them as well we'll just see how many pages we have so I need that then I was going to add some botanical if I need them and I printed a couple out of my um, actually I printed quite a few out of from my previous Italian ladies kit which are here there's those but I also printed some of the planar pages now where did I print those oh these are sort of all botanicals okay put those aside um, I printed two of each and what I did was I made sure I printed the same on each one and not mixed so that way I'm not at risk of doubling up in my journals now I just want to see oh here they are here's the other Italian ladies so I'm going to grab those because they may slip in as well these were from the previous Italian ladies kit just to slide in a little bit of botanical into these journals so normally I'm going to do three signatures and normally I like to do um, about 15 printed pages in each signature so I think I'll start um, with that that mean yeah 15 so with these kits I actually have uh, eight pages so this I printed the full kit on the reverse side I printed some of the embroideries so that's eight pages and then I need another seven so hopefully I'll make it I always think I will and then I don't so I've used the new printer the A3 printer um, that also prints A3 that is not eligible for Insta ink so that causes me anxiety but um, anyway, it prints very nicely. I'm still waiting for the other one to arrive. It said anywhere between today and the 27th. So I imagine it'll arrive on the 27th. So let me just see what I have here. I actually do really like these papers in with these kits too. I didn't print that one out yet. That one I did. That one I did not. So they get one of those. Um, oh, that's upside down. So that's nine. So here we have 10, 11, and then let's flip these around this way. Yeah, I think that's going to work nicely with those colours. 12, 13, 14, and then one each of these. So let's choose. Now I'm quite happy to rip the borders off, so I'll put that one there, 15. And I might use that one in, no, I might use this one actually. There we go. So that's those papers organized. 15 digitals. Then we have to, we'll have to find all the book pages and all that sort of stuff. And that's probably all going to happen today because I can't do too much on the covers because, um, because 
uh, let's do the botanical one. Uh, I'm going to stitch in my signatures before I embellish. Right, put that aside. So what do we have going on here? Love all the I love all the botanicals. So let's just see what we've got going on here. So I put that over there. Right. So we've got. I'm only. Um. Oh, I did double. So I can do two. Let's prepare two. We might. I didn't bring a cover, but I can go and get one. I do keep a few covers up here, so that's three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine pages. So um, with these ones, um, I will, let's just flip it over and let me quickly just give you a squeeze of what's on the other side. So that's a coffee dyed. And then I printed the other, another botanical, the ones, the pages I feel like with a darker pen. And when I say darker pen, something like this, um, that has a thicker tip. You can actually write very nicely on these pages. So that's on that side of these ones. And I'll link all the kits in the description box so you don't have to go and search for them all. So we said we're up to nine. I may need to print some more. Actually, I do. I need five more pages. So um, I will, I'm going to put one of these. That's ten. Let me see what I've got here. Oh, no, this one. Ten. Okay. Let me just see. Otherwise, I'm just going to go and print some more. I've got Italian page. Oh, they've got worm powder on them because that was when I was doing the last really dusty pages. No, I've got that kit. So I'll have to go and print out some more pages for those. Um, I don't I think I want two of those. Well, I could have two of those. So that's 11. Let's do 11. That one and that one. 11. So I'll, I will afterwards go and print out some more pages for these. I need so I need four more, which is eight more. Okay, put those there. Right. Oh, right. Now let's get the covers. I've got three covers here, so we'll deal with those for the moment. Now let me find my tape. So yeah, this is not what's holding it together um, definitively, if that makes sense. The three signatures about how big oh i've got to take this off but i'm going to put that all folded in a yeah i'll probably fold that into a pocket i love the paper wouldn't you love a pack of that paper look at that it's total recycled yummy paper if you want if you could eat it i don't think i would It'd be pretty gross um let's do i like to do an inch and a half and this is where i use my mat and just sort of wing it a little bit put it there and then um, yeah about an inch and a half I think is going to be good I just need to slide this up a bit and then I use my tape oh this is a nice strong one so this is just a packing tape it's just I just look up um, on Amazon paper I'm just going to put two little tabs there just to hold it um, I look up on Amazon paper packing tape and then um, there was the option of buying um, an extra strong one so I bought that how's that looking I don't know I, I you kind of need to stand up to do this you know um, let me just flip it over and oh, look, it looks all right to me just gonna do I don't you don't want to go too wide um, too, like I don't want to go too far. Well, I will cover it with the fabric, but just in case he didn't cover it with the fabric, I'm just covering up the stickiness, even though I'm about to cover it up further. So this is a totally soft spine. So then I need a piece that's going to go down like that, like so. I need to glue some of that down. This is my very bodgy way, not professional at all, of making journals. Very not professional. The professional people would be gobsmacked at the whole. I need to get some glue under there. You see, this is how we do it. Hadn't thought to pull this out and have it ready. Look at that. I need just it's going to slide a little bit of glue under there. 
just to stick that paper down because we don't want to lose it. It's original. We don't want to lose all the original stuff. And I'll have to slide. I'm just going to give it a little tear. It's probably going to be all the way down like that, but yeah, it is. Oh well, lift this up. Note to yourself, do this first, not after. Whoops. Anyway, I'm going to be covering this piece up, this bit up anyway. Okay, but I don't want to lose it all just in case you can see. Okay, don't worry about that. Actually, I've got a wet one here. It's a dry wet one. It's from, from a few days ago because I do reuse them until they become gross and then I get rid of them. So I'm going to put this tape down here. Trim, and then we're going to do it on the inside. I'm not pushing it down too much because I don't want to stick to my mat. Not that it matters. And then this is a bit easier because it's all being held together. Now we can work on the inside, so we may not get our pages done, but we can certainly choose. What we'll do is we'll choose um, things, you know, things to be included as pages, and then um, and I'll just prepare them off camera because you've seen me do that, you know, like a lot of times. So that's one done. Look at that, and we've got a nice soft spine there. Three signatures, yes. Could even go two inches really for the three signatures. Okay, so put that one aside. Actually, this one I was thinking is going to be a botanical. So I don't know. I just sort of had a feel for the when I looked at the. Um, I was going to say the lids. They're not lids. They're <laughs> they're book covers. When I looked at the book covers, I um I may add a bit of textile into these ones. So I think I'll do a slightly bigger spine. All oh, that's going to be. A little bit harder to do with the tape but we'll get we'll manage um i think i might add a bit of text but i did look at the covers and sort of feel like oh yeah i think I'll, i can feel that one it's just a feeling feel that one with the ladies and the, you know the fashion ladies and i can feel the other one more with a botanical sort of feel to it so i hope that's looking all right it, it did wiggle a little bit let's see all right to me you're probably all screaming at me crooked eyes it's crooked that's what you'll be telling me okay it's always exciting to start new journals always exciting let's see that looks very crooked to me so i'm, I'm gonna fix it otherwise it'll annoy me so just lift this one off Excuse me, book. Just switch your copy. What? Cooperate. Cooperate with me, please. Okay. That is that looking better? Let's have a little look. No, it still looks. I've made it narrower down there. That's what I've done. I'm not worried about this tape lifting it up, up and off all the time because I'm going to be putting more tape on. And as I said, then I'm going to be adding fabric. So I think I went too narrow there. Let's see if we're doing better now. Like that. Is it? What not to do? It's always a thing, isn't it? Okay. Let's see how that is now. Oh, it looks even worse. What is my problem? Why am I seeing it dip? Oh, mate, why am I seeing it differently on the other side? And I'm seeing it one way over here, and and another way over there. Why am I? Why is that happening to me? Okay, I'm going to grab my ruler. I don't like the ruler, but oh, I've dribbled on my table. Not me. The the glue. That's five centimeters. Okay, that I'm just going to go with that. That really does. Oh, it's the angle. I think it's the angle. 
It's looking better like that. Okay, just ignore it. I don't want to go bananas. Don't want to go bananas. Now this one is giving me a little bit of grief. See how sticky that is? I can't even rip that off. Okay, you just you can stick down there if you want to. I'm not going to argue with you, tape. Now, because I did this one a little bit wider, what I might... I'm sorry if... Oh, I just had a thought. Sorry if that it's bothersome to anybody, the noise of the tape. The tape noise. Nobody's complained. Well, I haven't done any tape in for a while, so nobody... Will, of course, nobody's complained. Look at the creases I've got here. It doesn't matter. It's all going to be covered. It's going to have pages in there and fabric and, and the like. So it's no biggie. Yeah, if it bothers you, just turn the volume down. I'm not saying anything very interesting. Like, I'm not telling you any stories at the moment, so you're not going to miss out on anything. Not that you wouldn't be missing out on anything. If I was telling you a story, you could, you could think, oh, just turn her off. Okay. There we go, that's looking better to me now. So that's going with one of my Italian ladies. So I'm just gonna pop that there to remind myself and plonk it over there. Glue, can you just stop? I, it would help if I put the, look, it's got bubbles. It's dribbled all over the table. Get it off the table before it dries. Otherwise it make my life difficult. Okay, so let's see if I can have a better time with this one. lovely weather outside 26 degrees but not humid or anything beautiful clear skies because we did have a bit of, just a little bit of rain like it was a like a heavy heavy dribble of rain for about 15 minutes and that was about it um, and then just rumbling thunderstorms and stuff over the last couple of days but I would you know like a really good day of rain like not quite as much as what the ladies got last year but a little bit of that would be good before we head, head into the summer months because in summer, honestly, I don't, it doesn't, you're normal. Unless we get a weird summer, like where there's a lot of phenomenon happening, like thunderstorms and stuff, we don't get a lot of rain in this area. So, um, yeah. So it's very concerning at the moment in Italy because, um, you know, um, what is it, Vesuvio? The Mount, uh, yeah, Etna's in Sicily, so Mount Vesuvio in Naples. It's a, a active volcano, volca volcano, volcano. I was about to combine the English with the Italian volcano, Vo volcano. My sister would be crying laughing, but she doesn't have time to watch this. She won't be watching this. Um. Anyway, um. So there's this area on the outskirts of uh, Naples called the Campi Flegre took me a while to learn that one let me tell you um and it's they're having a lot of earthquakes like every single day like kind of you know for something on the richter scale and everything because it's the volcanic activity that's happening and they're very concerned they're very very concerned they are thinking the volcano is going to erupt um there's a lot of pressure under there and um and They've got emergency plans and everything, but it's like the whole of Naples that would be affected by it. Like it would go under the lava. So um, it's really very, very concerning at the moment. And Lulu, who is full of information, um, told, came and told me today, Mum, you know what's happening in the Campi Flegre? And I said, yes, Lulu. I, it, they talked about it on the news last night, but we've it's been happening for quite a long time. So... Um, they've got evacuation plans, but I think that if it erupts, they're not going to be able to get out. Um, and Lulu was telling me that the report she read is um, that it will, it could go all the way up to Rome. Now, Rome, let me remember. I think Rome's about, it might be, maybe just under two hours from Naples, if I'm not wrong. It's not an hour. In the, on, I, I'm driving by car. Um, so they're saying that it could have effects right up to Rome. So keep an eye on that. That you'll probably have it on the news if it happens something more. Let's hope you don't get it on the news because that means it happened. 
but I just feel like it's that seems like the pressure is building up under the under the surface of the the earth, you know the the earth so I, I feel like it's an inev inevitable thing so my fingers are crossed and my toes that it doesn't happen because it will be a disaster of epic proportions but you know it is still an active volcano that one so when you live near those sorts of things that's a disaster okay so now what I want to do is going to put those on to one side. I'm not going to go and do any other printing for the other the botanical journal and get the other cover. I'm just going to start. I'm going to pull out my um, box of book pages, which will die. But I periodically, I do empty it out. <laughs> it's so heavy, I can hardly lift it. That, that's just a little corner of it. Um, I'm going to start pulling out. I'm just up on my knees on my chair. So if I fall on the ground it's because I shouldn't be up on my knees on my chair I'm going to grab out grab some of these bigger pages probably some of them came from those books from my ripping um, as I said I always keep a little bit some for you and a just a tiny bit for me because I you know I put in what I use I don't put in things that I'm I'm not you know putting things in my pack that I'm not using is what I'm trying to say. I'm not just, you know, I wouldn't, I don't buy anything. I've told you that a million times before. I don't buy anything that I don't like. I have, I have to like it to buy it. So, um, yeah. So we'll just pull out a bit more rag paper here. These were the ones that were damaged. I did put them in some other packs. I didn't, I don't think I put them in my regular packs. And we'll have a bit of wormy. Um, we always like a bit of that, a bit of wormy. What do you call it? Um, book page. I always like those sorts of things. There's two blue ones. Oh, aren't they lovely? Oh, look at that one. It's got... Don't you love a box of those labels? And what else can we put in? Here's a plain piece. Do we need to get into this box and maybe do some purging? I haven't done one of my purgy boxes for a while, but I tend to do it when, when I feel like I'm a bit out of control. I will um, throw in. I like these. Let me just see what I have here. Well, those are good pages. They're probably a bit small. I'll probably put those in more as like in pockets and stuff. They're not as, because they're quite big, these journals. Um, like tall. These are good ones. These are some bits of ephemera that I can hinge. I like that sort of thing. Uh, that one was looking a bit new. I think that's enough out of this box. Then we're going to have some straw paper. Just give you a tap, make sure you're still in focus. Oh my gosh, I'm tangled in my chair. Oh, oh, oh gosh, I'm going to have to find a new spot for this because I keep it on the old bodgy printer that I don't like that we're going to give to my mother in law. She'll like it. She doesn't need to print like I do. Well, in her mind, she needs to print it, as I've told you before. Okay, I've got them over there. Right, so we've got these straw paper. I've got straw paper over here as well. I'm going to move these over on that pile. <gasps> Please don't fall down and do things. We're going to have this. Here's some more. Oh, these are some plain papers from the book, so we'll hinge those. And... I have, I think that's all there, they're all small. I do have these, I don't know whether they might make it. Three of those. Put those in. Okay, um, just trying to think if there's anything else that I might like. Oh, I like the, oh I know, we might have, um, couple of document pages. I like to put those in as a page. And I also have somewhere there, maybe here. Somewhere I have a whole, here's another piece of rag paper. Somewhere I have a whole lot of um, just, you know, like these sorts of pages, but plain. I don't know. I'll have to pull those out. I don't know where they are 
But anyway, let's just start playing around with these. We may not get them organised, the pages, because there's a bit of thing, stuff to do here. Because um, my pouch, oops, got my scissors in the rubbish. That's no good. Put those in the in the drawer. My little scissors. Hmm. Bought one net a pair of those when she was in Australia. This pouch where I keep like all hinge things and tricky things um, to put in as pages. They're, it's pretty empty. It's only got a few printed pages in there. So that's it. So I need to start. I actually, you poked me scissors. Put the other ones in there as well. Um, I need to start filling that up again. Anyway, let's let's just do some hinging. I can do resizing when, when I decide to put them into the the books when I'm you know choosing them for the books. So I think we're just going to do some hinging and sorting. Oh, and you know what else we can get? Some some um, Florentine paper. They're a good thing to hinge as well. So we will like I'm putting glue on this, and I haven't even chosen another page. Now sometimes I like to fold the the straw paper. And other times I like to hinge it onto something because this is going to be very tall. Oh no, it's good. Because um, some of the, these those covers are quite tall. Um, sometimes I like to just hinge it and then fold up the excess and make a built-in pocket is what I like to do. So let's, excuse me glue, you need to stand up. So let, let's grab the, um, the now, apparently, my dear friend and customer, Sandra, hi, Sandra, she has told me, not exactly the same as mine, but similar, look, I need to clean that. Um, uh, Edith from Scrap Scrapbooking With Me has these in her shop. She sells them. She has a shop where she sends, sells, notion, like notions, these sorts of things, like well, they're not sewing notions, but they're scrapbooking notions. Can you say that? Look, oh, look at that, instantly clean. Good on me, good on me for doing that. Now, one person, one time many years ago, a person told me, <laughs> in not the nicest way, that I need to clean my mat. So I'm just cleaning that before someone, the um, dirty bone folder police get me. I've cleaned it. Look at that. It's lovely. So she has these. If lots of you ask me what is it called, I don't know. It was gifted to me. Edith sells these. Now, Edith, you're going to get a run on these now. Um, she doesn't know that I'm telling you, but she has these and um, she links them in the in the description of her videos. Let me just take a note and I'll link her channel. I'll put my note on here. Edith. I'll just write that so I remember. Um, yes, so she she the cat's mother um <laughs> i don't like it when i say she too much i'm going to just fold this one over um has them linked in the description box thank you sandra for sharing that because i was at a loss as to what to tell anyone because i'd been asked multiple times in the last week about it and i couldn't answer so oops and I'm sure lots of you know Edith because she has a big channel. She's very prolific and she has a big channel and obviously a very well-stocked shop. I don't have all those sorts of things in my shop. I can only provide you with the, the sort of supplies like papers and Italian or not, not all Italian fabrics, but, you know, fabrics because I'm a fabric collector. I've been collecting fabric for years, you know. It's not like a new thing. Now that's got a little rip there, so I'll keep that at the bottom. Oh, I'm going to fold this one, actually. I'm going to do all three of these. It's actually a good idea, in my opinion, just to to prepare, like have a, a thing with these all prepared. Just make a whole lot. Have a session, put YouTube on or your favourite TV show and just sit and hinge. Because sometimes we have like the books that I'm using are much taller than my um, A4 regular paper and or they will be also taller than the US legal paper I think it's called 
or is it called letter paper? I don't know. I think it's legal paper. Your, your paper is a bit different to ours, but you can get A4 paper, I think. I've been told in the US at a reasonable price. Um, yeah, so sometimes you just need your books rather than, you know, folding your digital paper, your A4 paper in half and that's your page which is what I'm going to do with those you need to have other pages in there that are going to give you some height um, rather than having I mean you can you then stagger your pages when they're not tall enough for a, a for a book or a journal cover you can stagger them but I do like to have some that are full height as well in each signature so that's why I like to um, hinge them and I also feel like if, I don't know a few hinged pages just add a bit of interest uh, to what you're doing because then when you you know flipping over and then you see this and I like that I like that sort of detail there so I put that at I'm going to take that bit off but I would size it when I put it in look at that I got a bodgy set of um, straw papers so I, I pulled out the broken ones which actually doesn't bother me because I will hinge that um, I'll put that I'll, actually I might even just fold that one I'll do a few folded ones but I'll glue something there something will be glued there and hold that together this one's going to be folded okay so that's those now these because they're very tall I actually like that I think I'm going to I'm going to hinge this with, but I don't want to hinge it with that. It's too much the same. I like to hinge it with something different. I'm not going to hinge it with the ephemera. I might hinge onto this one. Now, I think I'll hinge it. Oh, I like that. So let's fold this. Now, with these, because they're very tall, I don't actually like, because these are 1800s. This is a bit later in the 1800s, I think, probably 18. 80s or 1870s but it's still a rag paper um very neat one i'm just going to glue this on to here like that and um i don't know how low to go but then i don't trim it off i would just leave it long um and then i fold it up and make a pocket with the bottom part if that makes sense so that's going to go there Get that little curly whirly bit out I don't know if I went down far enough with the glue, so what I need to do is put a bit more glue there. Where's my where's my bone folder? At least I know where to get another one if I lost one. And that's going to go there. And then this, this may have to fold in and I'll glue it because I like the raggedy edge. But then also um, this may may fold in. But I don't do any of that until I know where it's going to go. So I'll grab another one. This one's a bit older. So I'll just fold this over like so. And that is going to hinge onto this one. Yep. And I'm going to glue it on that bit. So what I might do here... Oh, I'm going to lose that. Okay, I'll put it on that way. I'll put it on backwards. So I'm going to run my glue along here. But I don't know how deep to go. So then what I'm going to do is just a bit shorter than that. So I'm just going to grab this and run some glue along there. Like so. And that should be okay. So that's going to be there. And glue it down. And if there's any gaping bits, then I can come back. Or oh, with some washi tape, or I can... Um, or there's a gaping bit, or add some more glue like that. Okay. Really nice, really nice. This one, hold this over, and we are going to attach it to, oh, here's another one. This is a bit shorter. I think I may, I may tear that bit off. Unless I, no, I can't, I can't glue it. I need to glue it on this side and I'm going to glue it like so. Well, I might leave that and glue it on the other way. So we're really ending up having a, I'm going to have to do the pages in the next video because this is going to take a while to do this. 
with our selection of papers. Take that off. It's a bit sticky. But I'm not throwing it out because I've written. Oh, I needed to put my glue on here, excuse me. And oh, I did put my glue on there. Okay. Oh. And I put my glue on there, but I needed to put my glue up here. So what I will have to do already is just take a little bit of that off. Because I won't actually need all of that. So I'm going to fold it up. So I like them to be kind of the same height. So what I need to do here, because I accidentally put glue there, is just take that off. And that my, one of my books is not so tall. So um, this will probably be good in that one. And this will, see, this will go like this. I'll fold that there. Just to show you what the other one will happen with the other ones. And it will fold up like so. Okay, that. Now we have these. And these can glue to a book page. Again, they're a little bit longer, so I might... Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? They, I may um, have the op, keep the option to um, fold them up, but they're not that tall, so I may find it hard. Now, this is going to be my hingy bit here. Now, when you have two really narrow pages, like that you don't really have enough space to fold a little bit over to attach it, to another page where that happens all right now be careful you don't glue it on upside down um, where that where you have that happening is when you um, take a strip of paper I'll show you we'll do it with one even though we don't really need to do it with this wormy book because it's wide look at that that was perfect I'm not going to get a pocket out of that so I'll end up chopping that off um, just say oh here we're doing this one so this is narrow this is not narrow let's attach that to a more narrow page I don't have any narrow pages I pulled out all wide pages well how about that now it's also good sometimes these um, like also when I sell my pack sometimes they are not all attached to each other because there's so much glue I cannot get them out attached they're damaged so you can still use them. You can make tags out of them, of course, but you can also um, hinge them. So let's hinge this one. I'll show you how I do it. Um, you've seen it before, but I haven't done it that way for a really long time. I'm going to take this piece of paper. Um, also, because it's going to be slotted in the signature and probably in the middle of a signature, um, you're not going to see the white on the other side. So I don't worry about that. So what I do is just fold this over. We haven't done this for a really long time. I usually do this when I'm working in a really big book. Um, so I'll just, I probably should do it to the height of the, or that, that'll do. Um, just take the extra bit off. Then you run some glue along here. Yeah, I usually do this when the, with the really big format sort of books. And you want to use your hot, your pages without folding them at all because you need all the height and you need all the width and then I'm going to glue this on actually what I like what's easy rather than you know messing about with the side with the glue put it onto the side flip it over put it on the side where there's no glue so you can adjust it and knock it about and do all the things uh, put it on there and just eyeball it don't put it right exactly on the crease but just near it like one millimeter away and then fold that over and glue it on done and then we just grab this one put it on our glue paper and just run our glue down the side as that one as close to the center as possible but not right in the center you don't want to glue your pages closed and then I just sort of line it up might line it up at the top there and then you just fold that down and look at that voila we have hinged two pages together and we keep all our width all the width in case we have a really a bigger book sort of thing so that's how you do that i quite like that 
I think I might do that again. I might do that with this paper. I said I wasn't, but I'm going to do it with this paper because um, it is a little bit hard to fold. Um, I could fold this one, but it's a bit hard to fold because of the worm damage. So let's grab, and I've got lots of strips. I just need one that's slightly wider. Um, doesn't have to be too wide. I, I probably, I'll tell you what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't use, this is a more vintage piece of paper. I wouldn't use that because it's not, it's not strong enough. You need to like use a nice, strong, newer sort of paper or a rag paper. Well, I wouldn't use a rag paper unless I had a strip. I don't have any really wide ones. Okay, well, um, yeah, you've got to make sure you use something stronger. So I could use that, but that's not even tall enough. It and it kind of needs to be the height. I can get rid of those. Um, so what I'm going to turn to now is my straw paper. Straw paper is very strong paper and a very nice thing to use. Not tall enough that way. Very nice thing to use to, let's try and, and get it straight, to use to, um, which is a stretch of the imagination. I'll do it one and a half inches, I think. Me thinks. Um, nice one to use to to do your hinging, and I have definitely done that with. I'm going to hinge on this side because there's that. I just want to get my height. So that's it. Just put a little crease and a snip. Now I think I'd like to do something a bit snazzy as well with the hinging. Let's do something snazzy in a minute. We haven't done that for a while either. Probably should be a, a, a Roxy's Weekly Challenge video, the snazzy things. I try to do the snazzy things in the Roxy's Weekly Challenge. Because otherwise I'll run out of ideas if I don't keep my snazzies for that. Okay. So I'm trying to see my crease here. Sometimes you can't see it so well, but that's that. And then... This is not quite as tall, so I'm just going to, oh, I kind of need to put the glue on there because I've got that. Okay, well, I'm going to have to put the glue on the worms. That's what I was trying to avoid that, just because it's a bit fragile. Let's see how we go. I might, excuse me, sticking to my paper. I want to put a little bit on there as well. I'm just going to get rid of this piece. Oh, and we haven't pulled out the Florentine paper. We need to do some of those too. You see, it's all happening. Oh, and the other thing you can hinge on too, full of, full of chitter chatter today, I'm sorry guys, um, is uh, envelopes. You can attach an envelope this way and have them there ready to go. Okay, good. I didn't want to get a whole lot of glue down there. I may, I may put something there, um, but this will probably be trimmed down to height. So that's those. Let's do something snazzy. I can go ahead and do some more. Um, see, this is quite. I can I can pull these ones out whole. So I would I would go ahead and do that too. Grab a few um, book pages. See, then it rips. See, that's no good to me now. It's got a hole in it, so I have to hinge those. Um, that's what I mean. They just don't always come out the way you want them to. Um, so you can prepare those and put them in your thing. These ones, this is quite... Now, what will I do with this? This will make a very nice pocket too. So I think... Actually, this could be... Here's a snazzy thing. This is going to be... This is really strong paper. So let's make a few, three of these. These are going to be um, side tucks. So we're going to glue them on in a different fashion. I've got the window open in the other room. Let's grab a Florentine papers. What Florentine papers do I have? I don't even know where they are. Oh, no wonder I haven't been using them. I can't see them. They're here somewhere. Oh, on the wrong shelf. This is the shelf they should be. Here they are. Let's see what I have here that I can use. I might not have anything because I did, I've made my packs and most of the big pieces are in the packs and I've only got small pieces. That's not quite going to do it. 
We might be lucky. We might not be. See, that's about the size that I have. Well, that will do. I think that looks going to be good on that one. I need three. I can have this one, and we'll do that one. Yep, that's that's that as big as my pieces go. I probably need to buy some stock for myself. Yep, can't do anything bigger than that with my Florentine papers. So we're making side tucks. But what can happen is because this is I've got plenty down here, I'm going to keep that bit, and that is going to fold up and be a pocket. So this is how you get nice built-in pockets. And what I'm going to use is my Tombow glue and I'm going to run my glue down here like so and then I'm going to run across there and across the top like so and then just fold it down so this remains open and that is a side tuck just make sure it's all sticking and I've got glue there and then what I need to do, and I would mass make and then come back and do this, but I want to show you now is just come here. Now that I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that off actually. I'm going to, I should have, I'll show you a different way to cut it actually afterwards with this next one. I'm going to take that off at an angle and that is going to glue up there. It's extra strength. And then this is going to fold up here and that is an instant pocket. Now I may need to fold that in. I may trim it off. I don't know, but that is how that's going to work and now let me just glue this down already so that's another job done that I don't have to do later okay and there is a hinged page with a side tuck just folding it a bit better and I need to you, can, you need to cut this at a slight angle so you don't crash. There we go. That's better. A bit more space there. I love that. So let's do the next one. And I'll show you the different cutting. Um, now we need to just line this one up so that it's... Okay, just not right on the crease but close. As close as you can. Run your glue down there. If I didn't get enough glue, I'll come back and put some more afterwards when it's dry. If I see that it's coming up, just fold that over. Now, the better way to cut, I think, is I can just see where my paper is. Just add a little try, cut a little triangle out, like so. See, how did we go? Oh, look at that. And then this is going to glue up. going to run my dome folder along there. Just make sure that that's sticking. Okay. And this can go up and you can see how you can mass make. You can have a session doing a certain type of um, hinge pages and then another session with another type of hinge pages and then put them in your folder and end up with a whole lot of hinge pages ready to go in journals when you're ready to make them. And that is that one. And then we'll do this one. Yep, just checking how close I am to the thing. Now I put my, my glue on this side, down this long bit on the thing, but you could put it on there, but I'm just, that way I'm sure I'm not getting it into the crease. Oops, and I moved. That's not good. I don't want to move. And I may not be perfectly straight. Actually, I'm most likely not straight, but it is what it is. Just glue it down. Then just put your finger about where you need to snip to. Just a very tiny triangle coming out there. Open it up. Yes, good. Run along with your, ooze the glue out to the edge. Now, if you've got glue oozing too much, just run along with your wet one and glue this up. 
I think I'll do some other snazzy hinging in my my um, weekly challenge, I think. And then fold that up. Saturday or Sunday, I'll do... I like to work on my... You know, these are just extra things that I'm working on. And I, and I could do them all off camera. Because I do plenty of videos. Like we already have four videos a week. But I like sharing with you guys. I like coming in and saying hello. So... I do like, sometimes I just think, well, I'm going to come in here and work on them. So let's turn the, the, the video on and say hello. Um, and, you know, like, you know, I know lots of you have purchased the kits, which I thank you for. Well, Steph thanks you as well, because he's designed a lot of them as well. Um, and it's nice to see how to use them. You know, different, I might have different ideas to what you do. Um, or, or, you know, something different. So look at that. And you can do the same with like if you've got a digital that you've double sided printed and and it's about that size and you want to hinge it i mean that's going to work fine as well so um it's that's a nice way to do it so we've done lots of pages here let's just recap we've prepared we've put the tape on our um i've still got more to do but i can i can do more of that we'll do some some more snazzy ones as i said on on re works Roxy's Roxy's weekly challenge and um but um yeah we've prepared quite a bit here I probably actually need to prepare another one of those because I forgot we're doing four journals um <laughs> and so yep yeah, just put the wormy paper on there nice way to deal with that because it's kind of bodgy to fold over um we've hinged we've used the hinge here that's going to go in between um other pages so you're not going to really see the white it's not a problem um we've done that with the we've used the ephemera it's it's a nice way to use all these small pieces of paper like that's quite thick because that was a cover um and so you don't want to fold that and put that in your journal so it's nice to hinge it we've got the antique new, um documents there hinge we've folded some that'll get something on it i'll fix that book pages instead you know rather than folding them like that you can have them upright that's also why i do it and i'm keeping the extra bits as i said like i could decide here this these ones might be a side tuck there and i might trim it off on the bottom or i'll fold that up and make a pocket so they're decisions to be made um and that's just on a rag with a rag piece of paper and then we've got the kits over there so i'll link edith in the description box i will also link um the kits that I'm using um, in the description box as well and um, that way if you have them already then or you want to purchase them you'll be able to do that or you'll be able to use them because you've already purchased them so I hope everybody has a wonderful day thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon bye